For the first time a photo festival takes place in the town Baden in Lower Austria. The exhibition runs through the town center and covers more than two kilometers. You can see the pictures in public parks, on house facades and even in the water. But how did it come so far? Jacques Rocher, son of Yves Rocher, founder of the same cold cosmetic brand, founded in 2004 a photo festival in Lagasse, which is located in the Bretagne. The multi-priced photographer Lois Lammerhuber met Jacques Rocher five years ago in southern France and heard for the first time of this photo festival. Welcome and bienvenue in Bath. But it took him quite some time until he visited the festival himself. When I was uh, the first time in Lagasse in 2017 for the opening, I walked around and did think all the time about Bali, which is very unusual for me. When I travel, I think of all kinds of things, but not about Bali, definitely not. But when I was walking along these galleries, it came to my mind, this looks like Bali. I mean, if you look around here, and if you would be in Lagasse, you could film exactly what's here. With the same background, with the lush greens, it's a different situation, but the same, which sounds a little stupid, but as a matter of fact, it is. It's a small village with meadows and a small creek, and here it's more uh, manicured, more like really garden uh, under control, nature under control. But if you take it, the gallery and the background, uh, separate it, then it looks almost identical. It was a surprise and I walked along this and it didn't leave me. I thought, Lois, stop it. I mean, what, what kind of thinking is this that you I would like to have this in Baden or I see it in Baden? It's ridiculous. It's a festival. A festival has a certain location. A festival has a certain date. It has a certain program. So a, a festival is not an orchestra. A festival is not traveling. No way. So forget it. Jacques Rocher could be one for the idea to create a photo festival in Baden, as well as the mayor of the town, Stefan Sirocek, who loved the idea from the start. In August I traveled to Lagasse with Lois Lammerhuber and saw the festival there and I was impressed. And it was clear the same evening that we like it, that we have to have it because we knew it's fitting. It's uh, something what could bring some added value to the city of Baden. So in the evening we called up Jacques and he was also very uh, positive when we heard that we like it. So he encouraged to go on and uh, the mayor uh, invited him and, uh, and his uh, leading team to Baden and they came in September for one dinner, one go around and the lunch and the meeting at the mairie at the Rauthaus, and uh, at the end there was an LOI, a letter of intent, and so as a matter of fact this was the moment where it was basically decided that there will be a festival. 
The festival is mainly financed by fundings from the province of Lower Austria, from the city of Baden and from private uh, sponsors. We had uh, little time, but uh, most companies who heard about the festival and that it's about photography uh, were enthusiastic and tried to help the festival as good as they could. Last winter the decisions were made where to place the exponents. It was an interesting but also a tricky part. My husband, Lois Lammerhuber, and the curator of the festival, Florence Drouet, planned the locations last winter. The walk through the town and the gardens with a total different vegetation and thought about where to place the different themes. The narrative thread is the same like in Lagasse. When you look at the photo of the giraffe, which is one of the largest, and the trees which grow in front of it, it totally looked different in winter season. You need to have a certain visual thinking, and I believe we managed it quite well. And now vegetation took over and rewarded our decisions. The photo festival is always devoted to a certain country and a specific topic. Last year Florence Drouet decided that the festival should focus on street portrait studios located in the sub-Saharan countries. So this exhibition does not focus on a country, but furthermore on half a continent. Its title I Love Africa expresses exact that aspect of the portraits have been done for a certain purpose. At the time when these photographs have been shot around us, in the 50s, 60s, there have been a lot of illiteracy in Africa still. So people who came from the countryside and lived in the cities went to the photographers to have the picture taken in the way of like writing a letter home to their families, to dear mom, dear dad. And it was meant as a, as a postcard and, look and, sh and saying, look mom, we are doing well. So they dressed up in the studios and, uh, and have been uh, proudly placed. And uh, so it was a messaging to the family. And so, of course, these photographers around us, they have been geniuses. I cannot call it lesser. See the Kaita next to me to the right hand side I, I think it's not in the in the in the in the in the picture now is called the father of Ameri of african photography and there's a reason for doing that so when you look to the imagery it looks so simple motives people sitting in front of him sitting on a bike sitting on a on on or on a bench like we do now very relaxed nothing going on you think everyone can do that but at the time it was the photographer who really decided about the moment of the photograph much more than today because we used the trigger quite a lot. But at that time it was also about the material. You didn't, you didn't waste material. So all the focusing, all the thinking was really going for this moment. So he waited until he had in an inspirational way the, the belief that this is the moment when they expressed the models themselves in a way that it's good for them and it's representing them. <laughs> the 
The international successful photographer Fatoumata Giabati ties on to those street portrait studio pictures. She visited the festival in Baden for three days with her studio photo de la rue and made wonderful pictures of people she styled first. I was some auntie who, who grew up with me. She said, you are really crazy. Are you sure you to make this? And I say, I told them, you can tell me, what is it? <laughs> she said, it is some formation for, for become photographer. I say, wow, that is fantastic. You know, that is, we are the tradi studio traditional because uh, the people go in the studio to take themselves. They go really uh, with the best clothes uh, and super chic, like uh, body images, and uh, to, to, to make the souvenir for, for, it, for the self. You know, they, they, like, they like too much the pictures, the photography. You're the second time here now in Baden. Yeah, this is my second um, time. The first time, did you also come here with your studio to shoot? Yes, I came with my studio to shoot and everybody was really happy. Me too, I was really, really, really happy. Because that is the, the mind the people take the pleasure, the pleasure with the studio, you know? Because it's not my, our epoch now, it's from far, you know? <laughs> And it is really a pleasure for me to, to share, you know, this experience with the new people and the, everywhere in the, in the world. <laughs> Why do you use the black and white image instead of color? Because it is a, a original concept from 1960. You know, 1960, that we don't have the, the color time. It was a black, like, black and white time, and I like really black and white. For me, we have uh, more information inside. Uh, it's really strong. <laughs> How do you like the exhibition in general here? Have you have you had you time to, to walk around? Yeah, yeah and I, see? I, I see. I like you know the all the pictures when I, I take the studio photo de la rue, Mama Kase, Seduketa, Malik Sidibe, and I like also some. I like also um, the guy who work with the dog. Is American guys, I, I, Elliot, yeah, Elliot. I like too much Elliot uh, work, and also uh, James Bond, James Bond. <laughs> and also I like uh, team work and Omar. I like uh, too much Baudouin, you know. Everything is beautiful here. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Unfortunately, Fatoumata's husband died two weeks before she came to Baden. He worked with her together and always supported her when it was time to create something new. I want to honor my husband who died two weeks before. He was very sick. We couldn't come here together as planned to finish this project. He never got the chance to visit Austria. I want to honor him with this statement. 
I want to thank the whole team of the festival. They are all very kind to me and thought that my husband would share this experience with me. My husband took a great part referring to the logistics and because of that the studio can be a part of the festival in Baden in 2018. I want to thank you and I hope he rests in peace. We also saw pictures of Ethiopian photographers. Girma Bertha took pictures of people in the streets of Addis Abeba. And the pictures of Aida Moulinet are really an eye-catcher in the Rosarium. Lois Lammerhuber works already for many years for the print magazine GEO. For his ingenious work he got many prizes and honors. Since 1996 he and his wife Sylvia founded the photo book publishing house Edition Lammerhuber. We asked him what kind of characteristics should a good photographer have. It, it uh, goes back to a sentence which was coined by an Hungarian photographer called Laszlo Moholinocz. And he said, and this is the key sentence of all photography, done and for the future. The photo photography is here to make the visible visible. What does that actually mean? What does it mean? That you need to be bright enough and intelligent enough to discover something where seemingly everything is known. Good enough answer? <laughs> Sounds difficult. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and challenging. <laughs> it is challenging. No, but it's it's basic. It's uh, uh, there, uh, there's also something what I cannot translate good enough into English. Uh, I think every creative work has to do with uh, inspiration. Uh, you need all your life experience and all your knowledge to bring into this one decisive moment before you uh, push the trigger and uh, for doing that you need something like uh, how could I call it an intellectual Erkenntnis moment and it should be an, a moment of intellectual inspiration I think this is what what every creative process needs to be a one and for, for example, with Gio we had, we had a lot of criteria, and one has been sheeted in the other one. And one was also the moment when you start to copy your own ideas, you better stop. The festival Lagasse Baden is a festival of European dimension. So the city of Baden profits uh, because it's seen far over the region and far over the uh, boundaries, the borders of Austria. And the uh, people in Baden profit economically, uh, tourism got a boost and not to forget they can see wonderful pictures of world-class photographers for free over four months. on which Chunk decided, I need to show my people, as a mayor, the world. 
So he invented this festival and brought it in, into the public by having it in the open space, in the public space. And uh, he wanted to pick up people with the intention to show them how beautiful the world is. And at the end, when they have been seduced by great photography and have learned a little bit about the context of the images, the captions, reading the captions, they should go home with the feeling that we have a fantastic, beautiful world in which we live in, but we have to take care of it. And looking at these images, we should leave the festival and say, we should even take care better. This is the message what he intends to deliver, and I think it works well. Many of these uh, exhibitions here, they, they show beauty, but if you get closer to them, and I give you one example, the exhibition of Jules Satori. It's uh, called Photographic Arc, and that means he's working down a list of 10,000 uh, animals who are on the, on the brink of being extinct. He's now on around 6,000 what he did photograph. And while he did it, about 15% did extinct. So you walk along a gallery of beautiful, beautiful, beautiful photographed animals, but basically it's a death row. It's a death row. These animals are on a death row. You couldn't name it. And many of them, it's basically a graveyard. But it looks beautiful. And I think this is a chilling situation. When you walk along these beautiful creatures and you admire their beauty, and at the same time, it's in your mind. They are not here anymore. They have left us. And they have left us because of us. And I think this is exactly what he wants to translate to the people. Look how beautiful our world is and take care of it. We are responsible. Pictures of Phil Hatcher Moore are the only ones located inside a building. Not in a gallery, but inside the oldest building in Baden called Heiligenkreuzerhof, which is abandoned for 20 years. Uh, it's an uh, exhibition which does not exactly fit into the context of I Love Africa. It's there because it's, uh, it, this work was awarded uh, in uh, Perpignan, uh, with an award given by the Fondation Rocher for humanistic photography. And it went to Phil Hatcher Moore, a British photographer. Uh, and one of the benefits of this award is being shown within the festival. So this is the reason why it's here. It's fine art prints. So this was the reason why it has to be indoor, cannot be in the open air, it would be ruined qu quite quickly. And uh, the topic what uh, Phil Hatcher Moore shows us is uh, a disastrous situation. He took on the situation in Kazakhstan, in Semipalatinsk, where one-third of all atomic uh, tests have been uh, conducted. And that uh, means, of course, that not only these tests have been disastrous for the region, but the former Soviet Union uh, decided that the 200,000 people living there should be witnessing it. They encouraged them to go out and look to this miracle of atomic bomb explosions. So, of course, what happened? First, they lost their health, which was intended, if you will. It was really in German a Sauerei by the politicians. Uh, so they first lost their health, then they lost their existence. And thirdly, they lost, of course, their homes and in the end their life. So what we have the advantage now in this particular situation that in this building, which is so old, for the last 20 years nobody did live in the, on the upper floor. So when you have any kind of buildings, no matter where in the world, for 20 years abandoned, if you will, kept but in the, abandoned in the sense that nobody is living in these, uh, these rooms, uh, the, 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 the time works on them. That means 
if the time works on that, everything starts to fall apart. And this look of these rooms is in keeping so much with the photography. So it's kind of like, you know, you know the painter Escher? who makes this kind of weird situation where I do not know where the ending and the beginning is. And this is a little simile that it, it merges together the, re, the, the storytelling in the images with the reality of these rooms. In addition to the exhibition, workshops and lectures are being held. Anne-Christine Wörl talked about witches in exile. She described how women in West Africa suffer from the stigma of being a witch. She visited a so-called witch village, the only refuge for those women. It is difficult to bring a change. There are women who are strong and therefore unwanted because they are successful and emancipated, like Imogi, who became the chief of her village. I believe this leads to jealousy, resentment and envy. People do want to get rid of them. And mostly those women have reached an age where they cannot give birth anymore. The festival needs something like community building. And for that we need to pick up the people who are interested, also of course the people of the city itself, the city of Baden, to bring them into the festival and make them offers. And this is what we do with lectures in the first place and with workshops. And there are some other little side events like wine tasting, etc. But this is fill-inning. This is uh, to fill in a little bit. But uh, really important is the lectures. We have a partnership with the Arnold Reiner Museum, which is really a world-class museum in Baden, where we can hold our lectures. It's, uh, they have a beautiful foyer, which you can seat 100, 120 people, just the right size, where Photographers from, uh, who, are uh, who are here on display, who have shows here, explain the work. Although the pictures are placed in open public places for several months, they are still intact and show no signs of vandalism. We often walk around the galleries and check on the pictures if they are still intact and not scratched up. We often talk to the people passing by, and especially the locals of Baden are very impressed by them. We have always been fearful about possible vandalism. It's so exposed, it's open 24 hours, and uh, there is no vandalism. So I think the quality of what we hear here is so enormously that people respond with respect, even if they are drunk or if they are young. And I remember when I was young and, you know, how you are at the time, it, everything is funny.
even even vandalism is funny. So it's a uh, you know this is the, the this is uh, how you can afford to be when you're young, which is not being correct in the terms we we would like to have it, but this is how to be young, and it's not happening. And uh, I think this is uh, this is uh, owned to the quality of what we have here. A nice come together was the picnic in the Dobelhof Park. kurze Runde gehen wollen, drehen wollen im Park und mehr über die Bilder des Lagasselie Festivals im Park hören wollen. Der Lois Lammerhuber mit einer ausgewählten Gruppe steht hier. Jeder, der sich anschließen will für 20 Minuten, eine halbe Stunde, bitte jetzt hierher kommen. Danke. Da beginnt der Rundgang. Ausstellungsstrecke, die alle aufeinander referenzieren und die alle sich unter Tieren seiner Gewolke äh, von The floating gallery on the pond of Doppelhof Park. It was an idea I had with uh, Lois Lammerhuber when we walked around and we have uh, chairs floating around usually, then also pictures can float. And he looked at me and are, are you sure? And I said, we will see if we manage. And we managed, thanks to the employees of uh, gardens from uh, of city of Baden. Uh, who were very uh, supportive to set up the galleries and to make dreams come true. When you walk through the exhibition, you are not only fascinated by its beauty, but also confronted with tragedy. Animals who are being hunted down, encaged and even exterminated. The photographer Brian Sturton will come from Addis Abeba and hold a lecture here. He is the most prized photographer in the world. He won nine times the World Press Photo Award. For ten years, with some intervals, he concentrates on the war between ivory poachers and gamekeepers. The documentary film The Ivory Game, shot by Richard Latkane and Keith Davidson, shows the terrible truth about hunting down elephants for the ivory. The idea to shoot such a movie was influenced by an article in the New York Times, which included pictures of the famous photographer Brent Sturton, whose pictures can be also seen at the photo festival in Baden. The Ivory Game is a, a, um, is a documentary um, to fight um, the poaching of the African elephant. The numbers of African elephant went down to just 400,000, which is the lowest point e ever in the last five years. We lost around 200,000 um, um, to ivory poachers. And what we wanted to do is to make the world aware um, of what is happening, that if the rate of um, culling um, goes on like this, we will lose the elephant in just 10 years. Uh, wildlife crime at the moment 
um, um, is on the same level like uh, uh, like narco trafficking, like uh, like human trafficking, and everything is interconnected. Um, the uh, Chinese mafia groups really intended uh, to get um, the elephant extinct because they didn't sell uh, uh, they didn't sell the the, the ivory um, um, immediately, but placed them into warehouses. So. The fewer, uh, the fewer uh, um, elephants there are, the higher the price of uh, 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 ivory. And the real success story of our film is that with the beginning of this year, there is no legal market in, 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 in China anymore. Everything is forbidden. Africa's got 700 tons of ivory. It's being moved across continents being sold under the table. It's fueling international crime. Traders in ivory actually want extinction of elephants. The less elephants they are, the more the price rises. And it's a race against time. I can't afford to see elephants dying like this. We are in a war zone. The poacher's prepared to shoot at you, and you have to be prepared to shoot back. We are talking about hundreds of tons of ivory getting into mainland China. Organized crime is never far away. The buyer is secret, the seller is secret, the killer is secret. Everything is secret. You cannot trust anyone. He's the number one wanted poacher right now. One person has in his hands the destiny of an entire species. Killing an elephant is more than just killing an individual animal. It's tough because they're connected to each other. They're destroying a family they have go far and beyond our understanding. As long as ivory is worth money, these poor animals are going to be annihilated. They are a walking target. Ivory trafficking is extremely dangerous. Are we really going to allow the biggest mammal on Earth to disappear? Shoot! 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 Photographer Marc Ribot said, Photography cannot change the world, but it can show the world how the world is changing. This sentence perfectly fits this festival. The success of the photo festival Lagasse is based on the presentation of nature, beauty and photography. The festival runs until end of September and is definitely worth a visit. What are your plans for the future? This project shall continue. We have a concept for the coming up five years. Next year the topic changes. This year the topic is I love Africa. Next year it is the world. La Terre Question. We have to find a proper translation. And we will group the exponents again in the streets and in the gardens. This year we started with a festival program, with workshops, lectures, art talks and music. A program including the photo community, fans of photography and the citizens of Baden to discuss and exchange ideas about photography. We plan to expand such actions in the following years. The plan for the future is to continue the successful cooperation with Lagasse, with the festival in Lagasse, with Jacques Rocher and his leading team, and to show 
the exhibition of this year in Baden in 2019. And the goal is to get more visitors to Baden to see uh, photography at world-class level and also to get an impression of the earth, of the beautiful sites and also the not so beautiful beautiful sites. It's one of the goals of the festival when Jacques Rocher founded it. Something else what we consider in the future is uh, to do more of these side events, more workshops. We have also to, to uh, bring into play the Austrian photography community, also the photography communities of the neighboring countries, Slovakia, Hungary, Czech Republic. There's a huge uh, community in photography uh, clubs uh, we are very, they are very interested and I think that this could be a source where we could uh, harvest uh, people and bring here people and channel their interest. Yeah, this is uh, what we have in mind to do.